Hello, we could not hear anything. Hello. Ah, uh, good morning. Ah, uh, good morning. Morning. No one said. Good morning, Professor Anna Chalam, sir. Yes, good morning, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you, sir? Fine, doing well. How are you, sir? Ah, fine, sir. Fine, sir. Uh, great, great. Yeah. Nice to see you after a long period. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Of course. Me too. Yes. <laughs> so, how are things in Kochi? Uh, going on very well, sir. Going on very, very well. Good, very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Arun? Good morning. Am I audible to everybody? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Okay. So we'll start the uh, session. A warm welcome to everybody present today. Uh, it's great pleasure. Be a part of this program. I'm Mahalakshmi, 
so i'll be uh, navigating helping in navigating uh, so i kindly invite abiram to who is the associate professor and head uh, department of economics andram college to start and welcome to give us the welcome address ma'am over to you ma'am good morning to all a healthy soul in a healthy body is the words of tirumula health is wealth after the covid pandemic the whole world is in the process of recovery and adopting suitable objectives for ensuring development as a drop of this mighty ocean the department of economics gac nandanam is conducting a two days national level seminar on covid 19 crisis and sustainable development goals in india pathways for adaptation and resilience sponsored by indian council for social science research southern regional center hyderabad first of all we thank and welcome our principal dr r j chandran who gave us the permission and the encouragement for conducting this seminar i also welcome dr r kumaran the vice principal of our college he has accepted to provide a profound presidential address now it is our pleasure to welcome senior professor b usha kiran honorary director icssr southern regional center hyderabad will deliver the inaugural address we welcome you madam we welcome dr l venkatachalam an erudite professor rbi chair madras institute of development studies chennai will give the keynote address we welcome dr p arunachalam professor and head department of applied economics kochi university of science and technology kerala will give a special lecture on the topic 75 years of social and economic change with respect to sustainable development goals we also welcome dr a durai swami professor and dean college of science and humanities srm institute of science and technology chennai will speak on the topic impact of covid 19 pandemic on quality education we feel very pleasure to welcome dr k sadasivam dean college development council madurai kamaraj university madurai he will speak on food security and nutrition system in india we welcome dr r gopinath principal scientist ms swamida swaminathan research foundation chennai he will deliver a lecture on impact of covid 19 on zero hunger goal indian perspective and we welcome the chairperson of the technical session dr a annadurai associate professor department of economics madras christian college chennai and the reporter dr shobana kartigeyan assistant professor department of economics madras christian college chennai we also welcome all the faculties and research scholars from various colleges and universities who are participating in this seminar we welcome you all thank you thank you so much ma'am for your kind welcome uh, i request to like our seminar director to give us the seminar over to your own sir Arun sir, I mean, you are in the mute. 
அருண் சார் இம்பாக்ட் <laughs> Uh, my uh, msmes international trade supply chains leading to a uh, huge level of unemployment and loss of livelihoods uh, to be precise the covid induced economic crisis is likely to impede uh, uh, india's progress in at a 17 uh, sustainable development crisis ridden period it has been a difficult proposition to mobilize additional financial and technical support from international communities to uh, achieve the sdgs in this uh, critical uh, juncture india requires to identify innovative affordable policies to ensure attainment of uh, 2013 agenda of sustainability and uh, uh, development well uh, we, we need to uh, realize that even before a pandemic india was not on track on most of the goals except uh, uh, very few Uh, in fact in the sdgs in mind asadika amrit mahotsav initiative was launched uh, by government of india for activity in india to arun sir i mean uh, we are not getting yeah i uh, think uh, but the pandemic on the indian economy has been mixed and even uh, and uh, again the global uh, shadow has positively affected the environment uh, because of its air quality as it how these improvements were uh, temporary uh, during the lockdown uh, phase there was a reduction in oil consumption and power demand which led uh, led to the reduction of uh, emission levels but at the same time the lockdown has negatively affected uh, sdg 1 that is more poverty code sdg 2 zero hunger sdg 3 good health and being sdg 8 as well and even sdg uh, 10 to overcome the crisis and to go help in the revival of the indian economy so india is difficult to reach the uh, covid 19 levels due to uh, uncertainty it should be acknowledged that there is critical moment and more emphasis should be placed on the uh, implementation of the sdg so that the progress achieved till date is not stunted Uh, given the situation we are uh, in, this, in the the seminar intends to address the following questions uh, what are the impacts of covid in pandemic on the economic social and environmental dimension of uh, the sustainable development goals uh, considering the covid implication what is the priority of the success of the nation's economic progress on long and sustainable development is an excuse about the concerns and Uh, and during this uh, 
weekly technical session and participate in the daily opportunity to have national experiences and offer related to embedding economic recovery and arun sir you are some network problem Arun sir, no sound is coming. So I think the uh, the voice is not very clear. Um, he has to yeah. he has to unmute. I mean, it is mute condition. No, I think he just ended with this talk. So he just said because of the network issue. Uh, as just to continue um, so i now uh, will continue with the session uh, so uh, next i uh, welcome upon warmly uh, dr r j j chandran our uh, principal nadaram college to provide us with the presidential address welcome sir Is your principal muted or? Uh, are you good? Oh, yes, no. Please, please. Uh, sir, yes, sir, proceed. In the Yeradnal, ICS is a character agree. Angir Kirikum, Umlade Varium, Nan Varavete. என்னுடைய தலைமையுடைய தாக்கத்தை ஏற்படுத்தியுள்ளது என்பதை நாம் இந்த வேலையிலே அனைவரும் அறிந்தது ஒன்றாகும் இதனுடைய தாக்கமானது இன்று வரை ஒரு மாபெரும் ஒரு தாக்கத்தை ஏற்படுத்தியுள்ளது எஸ்பெஷலி இந்த ஃபீல்ட் ஆஃப் மெடிக்கல் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் இன் எக்கனாமிக் உலகத்தையே புரட்சி போட்ட பெருந்தொற்று என்று அழைக்கக்கூடிய வேர்ல்டு பேண்டமிக் என்று சொல்லக்கூடிய ஒரு நிகழ்வை இந்த கோவிட் ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பத்தொன்பது 
துவங்கிய இதனுடைய தாக்கம் இன்று வரை பல்வேறு நாடுகளை அதனுடைய தாக்கத்தை இன்னும் தொடர்ந்து வைத்துக் கொண்டுதான் இருக்கின்றது என்பதை இந்த வேலையிலே உங்கள் மத்தியில இது சம்மதமாக பேசுவது இந்த டாபிக்கில் சரியான ஒரு வாய்ப்பாக இருக்கும் என்றுதான் நான் கருதுகின்றேன் ஒவ்வொரு நிகழ்ச்சிகளுமே வரலாற்றில் அவருடைய தாக்கத்தை விட்டுச் செல்லும் என்று நாங்கள் படித்திருக்கின்றோம் ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் இன்சிடென்ட் இந்த சொசைட்டி அப்படின்னு சொல்லி நாம படிக்கின்றோம் உண்மையிலே பெருந்தொற்று என்று அழைக்கக்கூடிய இந்த பேண்டமிக் காலத்துல இது அரசியல் பொருளாதாரம் மற்றும் நம்முடைய சமய அதோடு மட்டும் அல்லாமல் நம்முடைய நம்முடைய வாழ்க்கையிலே இது ஒரு மாற்றத்தை ஏற்படுத்தி கொடுத்தது என்ற ஒரு வேலை வாய்ப்பு நிகழ்ச்சியை ஏற்படுத்திய பெருமை இந்த கோவிட்டுடைய பரவலை அதோடு முக்கிய பங்கு வகிக்கின்றது இந்த ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பத்தொன்பதில் துவங்கிய இந்த பேண்டமிக் என்று சொல்லக்கூடிய இந்த கோவிட் நைன்டீன் பல்வேறு நன்மைகளையும் பல்வேறு தீமைகளையும் நமக்கு இது கொடுத்துவிட்டு சென்றுள்ளது ஒர்க் ஃப்ரம் ஹோம் அதே போல வெபினார் என்று சொல்லக்கூடிய இப்ப எல்லாமே நம்ம செமினார் படிப்போம் இன்று உலகத்திலே ஒரு ஒன்றாக இணைத்த ஒரு பெருமை எங்கிருந்து எதையும் கேட்கலாம் ஏற்பட்டது <laughs> நாடுகள் எல்லாம் நிறைய பேர் வேலைகளை இழந்தார்கள் அப்படியே ஒரு பக்கம் இருந்தார்களும் அதே நேரத்தில் உள்ள சில நன்மைகளும் ஏற்பட்டது என்பதில் நமக்கு எந்த விதமான ஐயம் இல்லை என்பதை இந்த மத்தியிலே நான் சொல்லிக் கொள்வதை நான் பெருமை அடைகின்றேன் இதன் மூலமாகத்தான் நமக்கு இப்பொழுது வேலை வாய்ப்புகள் எல்லாம் வீட்டுக்குள்ளே இருந்து செய்யலாம் ஒற்றம் போம் என்று செய்ய சொல்வதன் மூலமாக எஸ்பெஷலி இந்த ஐடி பீல்டில் இருக்க உங்களுக்கு ஒரு ரிலாக்ஸ் ஒரு ரிலீவ் என்று கூட நாம் சொல்லலாம் எனவே அந்த ஒர்க் டென்ஷன் இல்லாத ஒரு சூழல் உருவாகியது மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் தி ஒர்க்கர்ஸ் தே ஒர்க் தி இன் தேர் வில்லேஜ் ஃப்ரம் தேர் வில்லேஜ் தே ஆர் டூயிங் தேர் ஜாப் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் தே ஆர் டூயிங் தேர் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் ஒர்க் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி பல்வேறு ஆர்டிகிள்ஸ் வந்து இருந்தது இதன் மூலமாக நகரத்தையே மையமாக கொண்டு வாழ்ந்த இந்த வாழ்ந்த இந்த எங்கர் ஜென்ரேஷன் தன்னுடைய சொந்த ஊருக்கு சென்ற ஒரு வாய்ப்பை இந்த கோவிட் நைன்டீன் கொடுத்தது என்பதை எந்த விதமான ஐயம் இல்லை இதன் மூலமாக அவர்கள் தங்களது சொந்த ஊர்ல விவசாயமும் செய்தார்கள் என்ற நிகழ்ச்சி தே ஆர் டூயிங் ஐடி ஒர்க் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் எந்த அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் ஒர்க் அந்த ஃபார்மிங் செய்தார்கள் என்பதை நிமித்தமாக Do a wonder thing from our subject. The more I'm at, in the world, 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 in the COVID-19, in the world, 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 in the world. Thank you so much.
Um, Thank you. We just move upon our uh, inaugural address, for which uh, I I take great pleasure in introducing Senior Professor Usha Kiran. A brief about her quickly before she starts with her. Uh, Professor Usha Kiran is a honorary director of ICSSR, SRC Hyderabad, and Dean of Faculty of Commerce, Usmania University Hyderabad. She has more than 30 years of teaching and research experience. In fact, she has handled a number of administrative roles at Osmania University and Indian Council of Social Research. As an invited speaker, she has delivered a number of lecturers, lectures at various institutions like Telangana State Police Academy, Human Resource Development Center, Academic Staff College, and so on. She has published a number of publications in various, various Indian and international journals. She has acted as an external member of member on Internal Complaints Committee of LIC of India, Southern June. Also, she is General Secretary of Indian Accounting Association, Hyderabad branch. Ma'am, it's such a pleasure to have you here and uh, please uh, welcome you to give us the inaugural address. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, I hope I am audible. Yes, ma'am, you are. Uh, thank you, Mahalakshmi, for the introduction. Uh, Dr. Jay Chandran, uh, the president of the function. Uh, Dr. L. Venkata Chalam, the keynote speaker. And Dr. Abhirami, Dr. J.V. Arun, the, uh, as the actual person behind all this. And uh, Sagaya Das and Mahalashmi and all other invited speakers and also the participants. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, this particular seminar is very awfully taken up. Are you with me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not able to get uh, the... No, we are here. We are here. Yeah. 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 So this particular seminar was uh, sanctioned at the grants. Uh, under a specific call, which we have given from ICSSR SRC. So this call was made, uh, notified in our uh, website, and it was under uh, the COVID uh, special notification. Similarly, even Azadi Ka Amrit Mahasav, we have issued one special notification, and we have received a number of applications. So as far as the funding is concerned from ICSSR SRC. We have uh, an objective that we would like to promote the social science research, especially. And the research should go in such a way that it should spread knowledge among the participants, among the people. So with that view, we encourage funding for seminars, symposiums, and so on and so forth. And similarly, when we look at the other things, what we do at uh, either ICSSR New Delhi or ICSSR SRC, I am taking this forum to uh, just you know tell you like in what way you can really get help from ICSSR. Because I find most of you are uh, belonging to the academics and most of you are lecturers or assistant professors associate professors and so on. Whenever you think about the research, the only way in which you can really make yourself known to others and you can really help the society is to do a research which is societally relevant and also somewhat unique. So think of a research in such a direction that you should always think beyond the limits and see that in what way you can align yourself or your research to the society. That is the most important aspect in the research. So as a part of uh, this particular objective, we keep connecting various RMCs, that is research methodology courses, uh, the basic things as well as advanced research methodology course. Because all of you know that without 
the research methodology, you cannot really indulge into any research. Therefore, we take up the research methodology courses, basic, which, are, which is meant for the doctoral students, and also the research methodology, which is advanced either for postdoctoral fellows or doctoral fellows or even to the young faculty. So when, whenever we organize such programs uh, for the young faculty, we call that as a capacity building program. So in such a way, we are trying to spread the social science research concepts among all the faculty and all the students, especially the research students. So when we think about getting uh, fellowships or getting funding, we have to keep in mind as to how we can really uh, build up our proposals. It all depends on how you make your proposal and how you approach the consent funding bodies. So let me just uh, give you uh, an example. We have called for minor research projects and the response was so fantastic that we have received around 100 plus proposals and what we can give is only to the extent of uh, six to seven from SRC. If it is New Delhi office, you get the full funding. Uh, it may be minor research project, it may be major research project or it may be collaborative research project. However, in case of SRC, uh, this being a regional center, which takes care of uh, the five states, and two union territories, we have a limited uh, funding and it is always a uh, partial funding. And under that, when we issued notification for the uh, short-term project, very short-term project, we have received 100 plus applications. So I must appreciate the Tamil Nadu state because majority of the applications come from uh, the Tamil Nadu. So kudos to your state. And similarly for funding, uh, these seminars and all such things, we keep receiving many, many uh, applications from Tamil Nadu. You people are so aware as to how to utilize the funding bodies and how to get the funding. So I really appreciate uh, uh, your efforts for all that. And coming to the topic, what you have selected for this two-day national seminar, let me tell you that the process of uh, sanctioning the funds is a rigorous. We keep looking at whether the chosen topic is contemporary or not, whether it is relevant to the society or not, and only then we accept the proposals. When we look at the topic chosen, you know, I must appreciate uh, Dr. Arun for choosing the topic that is the COVID-19 and its impact maybe on the sustainable development goals and every the the all the countries in the world are talking about the sustainable development goals so in a way uh, it is something like a target what we have to achieve over a period of time so by 2030 we have to fulfill our targets and every year there is an index which states that where we really stand so of all the 17 goals, when you look at the 17 goals, you have covered most of the goals in your uh, two-day national seminar, especially the education, the food security, the zero hunger and work prospectives, agriculture development and inequalities. However, when you look at all the 17 goals, there are other important goals also, but I know that you cannot really uh, talk about all the goals at a time. So what you can do is you can think of organizing some more uh, seminars or conferences, uh, each focusing on a particular goal. So that would be a, a fantastic idea where you can think of organizing a seminar for zero hunger or gender equality, or it may be something like uh, the climate uh, change or anything. And in between, let me give you a hint that whenever you think about the seminars, conferences, you're inviting the papers. So when you invite the papers, give them a hint that there should be a kind of a multidisciplinarism 
in presenting the papers. Supposing you just think about the uh, gender equality. So gender equality, most of the people think that it, it this particular uh, goal is to be uh, taken up by those departments, uh, something like gender studies or, you know, uh, somebody like, you know, sociology, etc. But it's not so. Anyone, whoever are uh, to whichever field you belong, you can think about what is the gender equality that is being achieved in your field. For example, uh, you take uh, the sustainability development goals and one of uh, uh, the research student is doing the sustainability development goals in connection with the sustainable stock exchanges. Can you imagine uh, the kind of work that is being taken up? So there are uh, various goals that are pertaining to the sustainable stock ex exchanges are being uh, taken up and the work is being done. So do not think in isolation. What you have to do is you have to connect the subject to the various disciplines and see how well you can really progress. So though we are speaking about access and uh, the kind of targets, what we have to achieve. So because of COVID, uh, most of us have uh, gone into the online meetings and online seminars, webinars, all these be, are being conducted. So when we think about the seminars, conferences, which are being organized online, what is the connectivity? So just now we have seen that most of the people, you know, they try to talk and however, the connectivity is lost. So that's not in our hands. Therefore, just imagine where we are, where how we are progressing. And basic thing in any of uh, these conferences is that we have to raise questions. We have to also find the solutions. So simply raising the questions is not uh, enough, but you need to answer them as such. So that is the reason why I really appreciate because you are speaking in terms of finding out the pathways in adapting the SDGs and also uh, trying to see like how we can really progress with the SDGs. And whenever I talk about the collaborative or multidisciplinary uh, research, let me just put forth uh, uh, one more point uh, for the benefit of the participants that is that in almost all the funding bodies like UGC or uh, you take ICSSR or you take any of the science uh, uh, departments, there is a lot of uh, collaboration that is being uh, done, taken up. Uh, let me uh, just uh, share uh, my views, uh, especially recently I had been to UK. In UK, the universities have adopted the sustainability development goals as their objectives. Can you imagine your college can adopt sustainability development goals as one of your objectives and you progress with that, like how you are able to achieve them. And, and taking the sustainability development goals as objectives, they have aligned so well that for their particular state, they are trying to see how well they have progressed in these sustainable development goals. So sustainability is nothing but inclusiveness. So you try to bring in inclusiveness and also you try to see that uh, every country is on par with certain targets and with certain goals, objectives. And that is how you try to have some kind of equality among the various uh, countries. If you look at the recent release of uh, the hunger index, where do we stand? We stand somewhere at 107 out of uh, 163 countries. Or if you look at the sustainability development index for 2022, we stand somewhere as uh, 121st country out of all 163 countries which have adopted uh, the sustainability development goals. So that is the gap what we have to find out. And everywhere you are mentioned with the targets, each goal has got a different targets. Uh, as a researcher, you need to look into like whether these targets are being achieved or not. 
and if not achieved what is the gap uh, between the achievement and the condition where we are and what are the solutions that we can really suggest to achieve and what kind of uh, policy uh, resolutions that the government has to take uh, must be uh, definitely uh, talked about and whenever you talk in terms of the policy uh, evaluation policy evaluation you can always suggest the policy modification if necessary or if you feel that the policy is not really uh, worth pursuing you can always suggest something like a new policy to achieve something so this way uh, all these seminars or the symposiums conferences should try to contribute to the policy so i advise uh, the college to come up with a volume of all the papers and also come out with a policy a document uh, wherein you can briefly discuss as to what is the progress made and what is that uh, you are suggesting to the ministries various ministries because if you take you know all these uh, uh, goals which you have identified uh, you have got a mix of uh, uh, ministries uh, which are really you know taking care of uh, these things therefore you can come out with a kind of a, a volume and also with a kind of a document of policy so that uh, we can submit to the concerned ministries and uh, that is how we can really contribute uh, to the policy as such so with these uh, few words i uh, really appreciate the college uh, for taking up this the uh, authorities of the college and also special appreciation to uh, dr arun and his team for conducting this seminar i hope uh, you'll have uh, fruitful discussions in these two days and uh, uh, i am expecting a policy document uh, from your college so that i'll be uh, you know sending that policy document to Uh, various ministries or you yourself can do that so with these uh, few words i wish you all a uh, happy learning and uh, fruitful discussion and uh, two days uh, you know uh, something rich in knowledge thank you very much for giving me this opportunity uh, thank you so much usha uh, ma'am i think it was wonderful start you had made uh, deep us about i think we have more clarity about uh, you know what icssr does and you know as researchers and academicians how we can you know look upon inclusiveness diversity and collaborations uh, so that was very useful thank you so much and wonderful suggestions you have given i hope uh, we will consider that as well uh, thank you again so moving on uh, i we will get on to now introducing uh, l venkatachalam sir so he is he is here today with us so venkatachalam sir a quick brief about him he is a rbi chair professor of madras institute of development studies chennai he has been a visiting faculty at the indian institute of technology meta school of economics and indian maritime university chennai he works on environmental economics with a focus on non market valuation environmental policy and climate change he has held fulbright nehru senior research fellowship indo french scholars exchange fellowship and indo canadian faculty research fellowship and won the japanese award for his outstanding research on development so it's a great pleasure to welcome sir and he he will be giving us the keynote address now over to you sir yeah well, good morning to all of you uh, could you hear me yes sir we can yeah, hear you thank you thank you thank you uh, respected uh, professor usha hiran the from the ICSSR uh, regional center professor arunachalam from kochi university and there are my uh, dearest friends here uh, professor uh, sadashivam uh, from adarigamraj university 
uh, the respected principal of uh, Nandana Mars College, vice principal, the head of the Department of Economics, uh, uh, and uh, Dr. Arun, uh, Dr. Mahalashmi, and uh, my dear friends. Uh, I am very happy to be part of this uh, very important uh, national uh, level uh, seminar on uh, COVID-19 crisis and sustainable development goals in India, the pathways for adaptation and resilience. When we talk about pathways for adaptation and resilience, uh, the seminar is also linked to the issues arising from uh, the global warming problem and how uh, the global warming problem is also impacting on the kinds of goals of uh, the sustainable development uh, uh, kind of uh, you know policies. Uh, therefore, um, uh, what I'm going to do is to just uh, you know show you some slides uh, and then uh, uh, you know uh, convey certain uh, important messages uh, that uh, the participants can uh, take home. Uh, think about uh, these messages and then uh, keep working on these messages. As uh, Professor Ushakaran uh, rightly said, you know, there are uh, a lot of issues uh, to be researched and therefore uh, all that we need to do is to think about these uh, issues and then uh, adopt uh, a kind of scientific approach, research methodology to address these research issues uh, in the field. And then uh, one can come out with, uh, you know, uh, by adopting such kind of approach, one can come out with uh, certain useful policies that can help us achieving uh, not only the sustainable development goals, but also, you know, various other goals uh, pertaining to development and uh, well-being. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, uh, that uh, I'm going to talk about certain small steps towards uh, achieving sustainable development goals. And uh, when we think about global warming problem, COVID-19, sustainable development goals, et cetera, especially uh, their interlinkage uh, uh, with each other. So we, we are thinking about, uh, you know, larger goals actually. And indeed, the solution to many of uh, our problems, development problems, environmental problems, uh, lies in uh, small steps that we take, right? So here uh, in this uh, talk today, I am going to talk about uh, one of the small steps uh, that, uh, that 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 is required for uh, making the sustainable development goals uh, possible by 2030 in another uh, uh, seven eight years or so. Right. So basically, when we talk about sustainable development as such, could you see my PPT? Hello, someone please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So first, let us uh, start with uh, uh, some economic theory that uh, underlies the concept uh, sustainable development. Of course, so you might have come across uh, the very famous uh, sustainable development definition uh, given by Brundtland's uh, commission in, in the year 1987, a politically popular sustainable development uh, uh, definition, but uh, many economists uh, may not be comfortable with uh, the uh, Brentlands Commission's uh, uh, sustainable development uh, definition, namely the develop sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generation, right? Then uh, the problem here is that, you know, how do you define needs? my needs are something different from, uh, you know, somebody else needs or my needs are something different from my uh, future generation's needs. And then, uh, you know, what kind of the future generation that we are talking about? Uh, for example, are we talking about uh, the immediate next generation or uh, 10th generation from now or 100th generation from now? And how do you accommodate the preferences, tastes, and utilities uh, of uh, these different generations in your development path that you are kind of uh, uh, proceeding with right now, right? So these are some of the kinds of uh, uh, problems uh, 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 that, that are uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, level, uh, the, the kind of uh, criticisms leveled against uh, the political definition of sustainable development provided by Brentlands Commission report. But uh, Hicks, many economists, 
depend on Hicksian definition of sustainable development because Hicksian definition focuses on income. Once you keep your income constant, your income moving on the sustainable path, then uh, everything else is supposed to be moving on the sustainable path actually because economists place more emphasis on income, right? So therefore, uh, many economists uh, while defining sustainable development take into account the Hicksian definition of income which is nothing but, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, Hicks suggested that the real income of uh, a nation, sorry, there is a spelling mistake, national, a real in, uh, the real income of uh, a nation should not be declining over a period of time. So you have to maintain the real income of a nation over a period of time. Of course, as students of economics, most of your students of economics, you know what is real, right? So real means uh, the value of goods and services, right? So that should not be declining over a period of time. So in order to kind of uh, operationalize, materialize Hicksian income of a nation, all that we need to do is to keep the capital stock on economy uh, maintained over a period of time. The capital stock of an economy because income comes from capital, right? This is what we have uh, studied in the undergraduate uh, uh, economics, right? So, uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the production function consists of four factors, the labor, land, capital organization, right? So all of them uh, generate income actually, right? All of them uh, uh, generate a real income, which will have to be maintained over a period of time. Basically income comes from capital. And uh, according to uh, the environmental economists, the capital stock of an economy from which you derive constant income, real income consists of uh, two major components of capital. One is the man-made capital, our buildings, machines, computers, the uh, you know ports, uh, airports, all of them which are being used for generating further income are considered to be man-made because they have been created by the human beings. On the other hand, we have another form of important capital, namely natural capital, which has originated naturally. Right? It it has not been created by the human beings, but you know the water, the land, the forest, the biodiversity, the atmosphere, all of them have been created naturally, and therefore. Uh, they are called natural capital. And therefore, the, the economists try to combine both man-made capital and natural capital and they treat that combination as the overall capital stock of an economy, right? And then the flow of benefits from the natural capital stock should be constant. That is what they suggest, right? So the flow of benefits from the natural capital stock should be constant so that the real income can be maintained as well as the sustainable development goals can be achieved on a sustainable basis, right? With, with this background, let me move on to just illustrate the entire concept of real income, natural capital, etc., cetera, with uh, the wetlands. You know, you are already familiar with wetlands. Wetlands are shallow water bodies. Like, you know, uh, for example, those who are living in Chennai might be knowing that uh, there is a wetland called Palikarane wetland, very shallow water body, but uh, they are very rich in terms of biodiversity as well as uh, the ecosystem services. Ecosystem services are the ones which originate from the environment, which are being used for consumption and production purpose by various uh, people actually, right? So uh, the, the wetlands are shallow water bodies they generate a lot of ecosystem services. They are rich in biodiversity, the flora, fauna, everything that are required for human well-being, right? So they may include marsh, fen, peatland, or water bodies, uh, you know, that are, uh, you know, fresh, brackish. So all kinds of water bodies, but, uh, you know, they, they, they are shallow water bodies. These are all called wetlands. Please keep this in mind. Wetlands as natural capital, they generate varieties of ecosystem services. What are ecosystem services? The beneficial uh, aspects, goods and services coming from the wetland and that are used by innumerable consumption and production activities in the economy, right? Please keep this in mind. Ecosystem services are, are like Hicksian income. Income has to be derived from capital and therefore wetlands are natural capital from which 
we the society uh, inherit derive income in the form of ecosystem services now you should uh, you know uh, kind of understand one thing namely in order to maintain this income from the natural capital in order to maintain the flow of ecosystem services from the natural capital you have to keep the natural capital stock intact you need to maintain the wetlands over a period of time uh, without any deterioration right and uh, if you look at uh, the income from the natural capital it is entirely different from that of the man made capital you can merely derive money income from the uh, man made capital but the income the ecosystem services that we utilize that we uh, kind of derive from the capital uh, natural capital or heterogeneous in nature in terms of characteristics some of them can be quantified some of them cannot be quantified some of them are visible some of them are invisible some of them are perishable some of them are durable some of them live only for a short uh, span of time and some of them uh, can be obtained over a period of time right so you know the heterogeneity it's not homogeneous in nature it's not like income derived from uh, your airport or income derived from uh, uh, your uh, you know uh, port seaport but the the ecosystem services that we derive from the natural capital stock which are being used by these innu innumerable consumption and production activities are heterogeneous in nature please keep this in mind and therefore they are all subject to kind of uh, vulnerability right and most of them are not traded in the market like uh, any other commodity like for example uh, if we trade uh, uh, you know uh, you know when we purchase a bottle of coke you know the value of the coke bottle actually but the value of drinking water the value of biodiversity the value of recreation uh, facility the value of cultural service provided by the wetlands is not actually known to anybody and therefore they 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 they, they are uh, basically you know the wetlands are uh, subjected to kind of deterioration degradation right so one of the major reasons why this important natural capital in an economy like india is deteriorating is because of the very fact that uh, the ecosystem services emanating from these uh, wetlands are non marketed in nature their values are not at all captured anywhere in the system not only that most of these ecosystem services are being used informally in an informal setting they are not traded in the formal uh, kind of institution sector as a result the wet wetlands are subjected to degradation and uh, depletion and as a result the ecosystem services are declining over a period of time leading to declining hixian income leading to declining real income to the society the point is most of the income coming from the wetlands or most of the ecosystem services coming from these wetlands feed into the policies achieving sustainable development goals the the, the simple step that i am going to highlight here is that if you protect the wetlands you will be able to achieve many different sustainable development goals similarly there may be many other small steps that we need to kind of uh, initiate in the in the economy and uh, i will leave what are the other such steps that need to be initiated in the economy to the audience of this uh, important uh, seminar and by end of the seminar maybe by tomorrow evening you will have lot of ideas about uh, uh, you know uh, various aspects of sustainable development goals and you will be thinking about several steps but um, here i am i am talking about a one small step namely how wetlands that is protecting the wetlands can help us achieving sustainable development goals basically what are the ecosystem services i am going to show you very simple things like some you know important photographs that we have taken Uh, from these wetland areas during the uh, field work and very recently we have completed an economic valuation study among 80 wetlands in tamil nadu and uh, you know the results are amazing actually in terms of uh, you know the volume of uh, the ecosystem services uh, that these wetlands are uh, generating and how important uh, these uh, uh, ecosystem services are for uh, improving the well being of the people of tamil nadu not only tamil nadu but also 
at the global level right so uh, so what 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 is the income or what are the ecosystem services that are coming from the wetland please look at uh, these kinds of things the very first thing that comes from these wetlands is food in terms of fish in terms of uh, prawn in terms of uh, crabs in terms of uh, snails what we have seen is that in certain places people are uh, uh, consuming the snails also they say that they, it has some uh, the flesh of the snail has some medicinal value nutritious value and it is it is indeed addressing the needs nutritional needs uh, for food uh, requirements at the local level actually right uh, in that sense uh, these uh, uh, benefits from the wetlands are playing a very major role in some of the brackish water wetlands coastal wetlands what we have found is that these uh, um, mussels are being collected and being eaten uh, by the people and we have uh, found that people are using tubers people are using green vegetables people are using uh, you know this uh, greens called ponangani it seems that uh, you know it it has the ability to extend our life expectancy you will be feeling younger as long as you are eating this uh, particular uh, green leafy vegetable and this is another kind of vegetable that is being widely used in urban areas and uh, this uh, vegetable comes mainly from the banks of the wetlands right and uh, what we have seen is that people are also collecting some of these uh, minor forest produces from the uh, wetland regions right and uh, they are using uh, these kinds of products both for consumption purpose as well as for uh, commercial purpose okay so they sell uh, these products in the local market eke out uh, livelihoods out of it right so all these things right people uh, you know eat the birds of course you are not supposed to eat the uh, birds uh, in the wetland area which is illegal but still you know there are as i said you know many of the activities are taking place uh, in an informal setting and therefore uh, you know you you can't uh, catch hold of uh, these people actually but uh, the point that i am trying to make here is that uh, they are all being used for consumption purpose right from the wetland and uh, you know wetlands provide um, uh, the wood for many different purposes like the small woods for agricultural uh, implements as well as you know constructing cow shed and things like that fuel wood for example what we have found in many of the wetlands is that uh, uh, you know these wetlands are infested with this uh, valley curvy it's a kind of invasive species thorny kind of bush which is uh, widely being used for uh, uh, cooking purpose especially in rural areas in the uh, kind of uh, uh, scenario where your gas price is uh, increasing uh, because of uh, increase in the uh, price of crude oil in the international market you know people are switching switching over from the uh, uh, lpg to uh, fuel route actually in that sense uh, the wetlands are contributing to minimize the impact of uh, inflation on people um, in terms of providing substitutes like this you know people collect cow dung Uh, from the wetland area and use it for uh, fuel purpose and uh, i have seen many wetlands providing uh, drinking water some of them are being directly used for drinking purpose like this and some of them are uh, uh, you know uh, basically uh, providing uh, raw water which is being treated by the government and then supplied through these uh, methods and in chennai you can see this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, scene Uh, widely uh, across the city uh, especially during summer season and um, this is uh, this is what uh, uh, is happening uh, in many parts of the wetlands actually you know wetlands uh, provide raw water for uh, commercial purpose like this and uh, wetland water is also being used for irrigation purpose and it is not only surface irrigation but also ground water irrigation and as a part of the ground water is also being used for commercial purpose and the water from the wetland is being used for industrial purpose for example there is a wetland called kolave lake in chengalpet which supplies raw water for mahindra city for various industrial and service related activities and you know when the income of the people increases what we find is that the recreational uh kind of uh, uh, service becomes uh, a kind of luxurious kind of uh, commodity actually it has a high income elasticity of demand and therefore even for a small increase in income there is a huge demand for uh, recreational activities and many people prefer to uh, kind of go in for uh, water based recreations like this 
and uh, what we have seen is that uh, this is uh, a photograph taken from the Vembanadu Lake in uh, Kerala, and it seems that around 2,500 houseboats are operating in this particular uh, stretch, uh, which provides livelihoods for many uh, people uh, dependent on this tourism, actually, right? And uh, you have, uh, you know, we, we widely see this kind of benefit uh, in rural areas, uh, you know, people learning swimming. Indeed, I learned my swimming from my village pond. And uh, people use wetlands for, uh, uh, you know, kind of personal hygiene, as well as for uh, washing clothes or washing utensils. Uh, and uh, the wetlands are being used for commercial purposes, especially by the dobies and all. And wetlands provide religious benefits like this. You know, nowadays the uh, Vinayaga idols uh, are immersed uh, in water bodies like wetlands. And after death ceremonies are taking place on the wetlands and therefore water plays a major role in, uh, in uh, uh, people's culture actually. And livestock depends largely on uh, wetlands for the drinking purpose like this and then for uh, kind of grazing purpose, right? And uh, sometimes people collect fodder from the wetland and uh, the water buffaloes will have to be there in the water for at least two to three hours every day in order to increase their productivity, you know, farmers uh, or the livestock owners uh, uh, practice this. And therefore, you need wetland uh, with water. And uh, the, the livestock hygiene, as well as uh, the agricultural machineries are being washed in the wetlands, which is a kind of a service, which uh, otherwise will cost you in case you take these machineries to uh, regular washing, uh, uh, you know, service providers they will charge you 500 to 700 per vehicle. But uh, this is also harmful because, you know, the diesel and other oil, etc., may uh, mix up with this water. But, uh, you know, uh, but still it is a kind of service. And what we have seen is that people cut the grass and uh, use it for uh, commercial purpose. The mat making or uh, the screen, you know, window screens are being made out of... Uh, the grasses, which provide a lot of uh, income to the people dependent on it. And, uh, you know, during COVID-19, of course, the seminar is co on COVID-19. The, uh, the, the Ayurvedic and Siddha medicines, they played a major role in containing the spread of uh, the COVID-19. And uh, the ingredients for Ayurvedic and Siddha, they come from uh, uh, the wetlands only, the basic medicinal plants like this. And for example, this is uh, called Tudwala in Tamil, which is uh, good for uh, containing the cold, okay, and uh, cough, right? So many COVID affected people, they drank this uh, soup from this particular, this thing. And this is another medicinal plant, which is widely seen on the uh, banks of uh, the, especially in the wet areas in wetlands. And this is the only cure for hepatitis uh, B and C, right? No allopathic medicine can cure where hepatitis B and C. And this is a kind of uh, very powerful medicine, which is found in the wetland area. And wetlands uh, do indeed contribute towards pollination, whose service can never be quantified, right? Enormous uh, pollination service is being provided. And as a result, you know, the farmers are benefited. And, uh, you know, this is another uh, kind of thing which we widely uh, saw in the wetland areas people collecting the topsoil and using it for agriculture purpose. Rather than uh, using uh, chemical fertilizers, you know, people can use this, uh, farmers can use this. And as a result, the, the output becomes organic in nature, as well as, you know, it reduces nitrogen uh, emission. And therefore, it also contributes towards uh, reduced climate change, uh, this thing. It uh, not only gives private uh, profit to the farmers, but also there is a social benefit. And for uh, people collecting... Uh, clay from the wetland and using it for pottery, toy making, and uh, sand mining was also going, but uh, sand mining up to certain level is acceptable, but definitely not beyond this uh, unacceptable level, but still sand mining uh, is a kind of service. And what we have seen is people have collected uh, um, many other minor forest produces like this. For example, in Vosteri Lake uh, near Pondicherry, people collect flowers and then uh, they sell these flowers in the nearby uh, Pondicherry region, especially uh, near the Aravindar Ashram, uh, so, uh, and they earn around 800 to 1000 rupees per day. And this is uh, duck rearing. Duck uh, rearing is a highly profitable one and it benefits landless laborers basically. You see the old man and he is not very skilled actually. 
but this requires water ducks uh, can uh, you know survive only if there is water and wetlands provides uh, wetlands provide this uh, water for uh, duck rearing and uh, fishing commercial fishing which uh, provides a lot of income to the local people and uh, salt pans especially in the coastal wetlands we find the salt pans providing lot of livelihoods and income to people and recreational benefits like this and recreational fishing bird watching and you have biodiversity you have research benefit you have educational benefit you have flood regulation if you, if you don't maintain the wetlands properly you will have lot of floods there will be lot of flood damage and therefore wetlands provide uh, this highly valuable service to the society but we don't recognize it actually right we go and construct our house in the wetland regions and then uh, get uh, flooded um, you know uh, like this and wetlands also assimil assimilate uh, uh, some uh, amount of uh, waste water and therefore uh, wetlands provide uh, the assimilative service as well and sometimes they assimilate uh, the sewage water also and sometimes they accept uh, the solid waste being dumped into it to some extent and of, apart from uh, these uh, benefits you know you have microclimatic stabilization groundwater recharge co2 and methane absorption soil moisture conservation enormous benefits are being generated by one single natural capital for example if you look at the computer which is a natural uh, sorry man made capital it can serve only one purpose if you look at the pen which is a man made capital and it can serve only one purpose if you look at the port it can serve only one purpose whereas the natural capital serves varieties of purposes which are being used by people actually okay so how do you estimate the monetary value of these services and uh, we have used several methods and what we have found is that uh, you know um, uh, the the 80 wetlands that we have taken for our study are supplying around uh, 4386.65 crores worth of ecosystem benefits every year 80 wetlands supplying 4387 crores worth of ecosystem services we have valued all the services that uh, we have shown through those uh, photographs and uh, you know you you should understand one thing namely this is uh, only uh, a very kind of uh, limited number of services that too also they are all of uh, very poor quality because most of these 80 wetlands uh, uh, are uh, uh, are deteriorated degraded and therefore they supply only very limited number of ecosystem services right and that too also even that uh, uh, limited number of services with uh, many of them uh, being of uh, poor being poor quality services uh, the value is 4387 crores but uh, what about the value of ecosystem services in case we improve the 80 wetlands to the maximum capacity right we improve we if we restore all the 80 wetlands for example if you remove siltation if you remove all the invasive species if we control pollution if we if you treat a solid so, sorry solid waste and things like that if if you re remove en encroachment right if you do all these kinds of things then we will be able to achieve 17468 crores per annum from the 80 wetlands okay so what is the difference the difference is uh, uh, for example 13081 crores right now they are providing only 4300 odd crores and in case we improve the wetlands uh, to the maximum extent possible they can supply 17500 crores worth of uh, uh, ecosystem services and therefore the net benefit in case we restore these wetlands would be 13000 81 crores actually this is a huge amount of money from just 80 wetlands uh, tamil nadu itself has 42000 wetlands imagine what would be the volume of uh, ecosystem services that we would gain in case we improve the quality of all the 42000 wetlands right so that is the kind of message that comes from this so the point that i am trying to make here is that once you maintain the capital stock intact then you will be able to achieve many different sustainable development goals. For example, the very goal of the number one, SDG one, poverty reduction. 
most of the people are dependent on the wetlands for their food for the drinking water for their agricultural uh, purpose for uh, their livelihoods right poverty can be reduced to, to the maximum extent possible especially at the local level provided you are maintaining the wetlands properly you are maintaining the local forest properly you are maintaining the local pasture land properly you are maintaining the biodiversity properly right and similarly hunger you know they they can just go to the wetland catch hold of some fish come uh, you know bring that fish eat it so that your hunger uh, you know can be minimized actually good health well being that is uh, being achieved by environmental uh ecosystem services like uh, drinking water and things like that education especially female education in some of the areas where drinking water is not available it is women and children especially female uh, uh, children who will have to bear the burden of fetching water for household purpose and as a result their education is getting affected right so uh, better education especially for uh, women and children Uh, can be achieved by way of maintaining the environment properly gender equality as i said whenever there is an environmental problem the entire burden falls on women actually so gender equality can be brought about by improving the environmental quality like uh, wetlands actually and the sixth uh, uh, target namely water supply and sanitation they can be directly provided only by the maintaining the water bodies and wetlands reduced inequality you know when poorer people are becoming better off the inequality can be minimized and that can be done only if we maintain the uh, wetlands actually and the cities are nowadays dependent on the uh, inputs ecosystem services uh, from these wetlands actually for example in chennai every day around 150 million liters of uh, water is being drawn from viranam lake viranam lake is we located in um, you know around uh, uh, 300 kilometers away from chennai actually so uh, kind of sustainable cities are dependent largely on the wetland uh, that are uh, located uh, in far away distance similarly protecting the terrestrial ecosystems and biodiversity indeed you might have seen that wetlands support uh, uh, you know unique uh, uh, biodiversity ecosystem services uh, and ecosystems and therefore they need to be protected properly and uh, friends uh, i can i can't cover all the sdgs and all the kind of uh, natural capital that are required for uh, promoting sdgs but i have just illustrated with one very simple thing namely how protecting the wetlands one of the forms of nansa again for uh, giving so giving this uh, opportunity uh, to share some of my simple ideas uh, with you and uh, i wish you all the best sure that this uh, a seminar will definitely benefit uh, you all in terms of enriching knowledge and uh, uh, and uh, doing further research thank you very much thank you so much uh, sir uh, i think it's a wonderful way to kick start the session i guess uh, you know it's sustainable the meaning of sustainable development and to understand local context and local economic services ecological systems and the importance of preserving them to enhance the uh, you know meet the goals that we are looking for so and it was wonderful presentation lot of pictures you made it simple yet so beautiful sir thank you so much uh, thank you um so we'll uh, as we have already started with a wonderful session we'll continue uh, with uh, topic of uh, you know dr p arnachalam sir is here he has been waiting patiently for us so quick brief <laughs> about and we'll kick start is the talk so dr p arnachalam is a professor and head of the department of applied oh, mahalakshmi any break you are giving i mean just i want to know i mean uh... so if you want we can have a quick 5 minutes break uh, yeah yeah that... that's because uh, when uh, inauguration yeah, over we can do that so we can do that yeah go <laughs> you go for what up thanks then we can uh, i mean uh, we can start okay so okay so the time is 11:20 probably we'll uh, start session at 11:30 sir would that be okay with you uh, 25 25 we can start no 25 problem 25 is okay so i kindly request all of, all of the participants to take a quick uh, tea break excuse me madam i am yes. here i am here to propose what up thanks dr sagayadas yes sir yes 
can i yes yeah proceed proceed yeah. just to keep your video on so that we can see the <laughs> most of them are i mean keeping your i mean videos offline i mean video uh, yes so i have to yeah ah uh, yes yes Yes, so yes. sorry, I assumed that the vote of thanks was towards the end of the day. I'm sorry. No, no, that. this is this is for inaugural session. Okay. okay. <laughs> thanks for reminding. Okay. Me. Yes. Good morning. It's my privilege to propose vote of thanks for this inaugural session of two days national seminar organized by the Department of Economics, Government Arts College, Chennai. I take this opportunity to express uh, my sincere thanks. to our beloved principal who gave permission to organize this seminar and also i express my sincere thanks to our vice principal professor kumaran who gave presidential address next may i convey my sincere thanks to professor usha kiran honorary director icssr southern region uh, she elaborately explained the possibility of getting research funds for doing research activity and for organizing uh, seminars and conferences i convey my best wishes and thanks to uh, madam thank you madam our sincere thanks to professor venkatachalam professor rbi chair mids chennai he gave a wonderful session on wetland the importance of wetlands and the usefulness usage of uh, wetlands thank you very much sir i express my thanks to our uh, head of the department professor t e. abirami who gave welcome address for this inaugural session and for her support to organize this seminar in a successful manner thank you ma'am i must thank uh, dr j v arun the seminar director assistant professor department of economics who took initiative in all possible ways to organize this seminar it is not easy task to organize a seminar of this kind on behalf of our department i congratulate and wish him all success and uh, thank you very much for the initiative you you take you took to organize this seminar thank you sir so with this i conclude my vote of thanks thank you one and all Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Sorry about the mess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank